G'day guys, sorry to hijack the start of this video. I just wanted to let you know that we've got a Patreon group camp in the next couple of weeks. So if you've ever thought about becoming a Patreon supporter of the channel, now's a pretty good time. Uh, it's not too late to, to join and to come along on this group camp. They're a hell of a lot of fun. We've done a couple of successful ones over the years. And um, yeah, there's something that's really fun to, to meet like-minded people. If you don't know what Patreon is, there's some details in the description below, but basically it's a way to support the channel um, come along to group camps like the one in a couple of weeks' time, get discounted and free merchandise, uh, exclusive content, and access to early content like this video you're watching now, patrons have already seen. Anyway, I won't bang on about it, but there's some more information in the description below. Let's get to this week's video. This one was heaps of fun to edit, so hopefully it's fun for you guys to watch. Cheers, guys. G'day, guys. Cam Wild Wild Touring. We're in Kakadu. Kakadu. It's World Heritage listed, so it's uh, managed by the federal government. Federal government. It was $100 for the four of us. That covers you for seven days in the park, and then you can extend it for free for a further seven days if you want to. A lot of people said don't bother going at all because there's a lot of things shut at the moment. Yeah, and there is. Yeah, and it's expensive. Um, so you, you've probably heard before, like Kakadu, Kaka don't. And that's one thing we sort of wanted to find out for ourselves because we've got the time up here and it's been on our bucket list. So we do want to check it out. Yeah, I never I never considered not coming. I'd like to experience it for myself. We've got about four nights up our sleeves. There are sort of two main hubs in Kakadu. You've got Jabiru, which is the, the biggest township and there's fuel and, and caravan parks there. And then you've got Kakadu as well, which is where Kowinda Lodge is and they run boat cruises and whatnot out of there as well. Yeah. Um, so they're the two main harbours. We're going to try and do one night around both of those two areas and then we're going to go to some um, some of the national park camping as well. So Yeah. So we're not going to do everything you can do in this area. We're just going to do the things that are A, open and B, sort of accessible for us with little ones. Yep. But um, we're really looking forward to it and uh, we'll sort of share our journey with you as we go. Anyway, let's go check out Kakadu. Eh? Let's go. Come on. So this is the campground to do Majuk Falls, it used to be called Barramundi Falls. Yes. Um, yeah. Which is, yeah, the primary reason we're here. A nice little campground. It's it's sort of like more like kind of bush camping. There's not, yeah. no real sort of designated bays. It's not actually manned. There's no um, camp host or anything like that. So you just sort of drive through and find your own space. Yeah, they call them unmanaged campsites, but you still have to pay here. So it's- uh, Through an honesty box. Yeah, honesty box. So we paid $15 for one night. We're only yeah. staying here the one night just to do the Majuk uh, walk. But word of warning though, the road getting in here was pretty um, narrow, corrugated, and um, even driving through the campsite, the branches are really, really are so low. close. So Tiff did uh, warn me, um, it's only a 10 kilometer drive in here like from the main road, from Kakadu Road or whatever it is. Yeah. 10 k's of corrugations. And to be honest with you, I, I, I thought 10 k's would just suffer it. I wasn't going to air down, but I didn't get far in and it was horrendous. So I've had, I had to pull over and air down. Um, yeah, really, really rough. Like you said, really narrow, not, not much room for cars to come past. 
And you did say that they don't actually recommend this campsite for people with caravans. Yeah, if you go on the Kakadu website, they do say this one is not for caravans. It's just camper trailers and tents. But we spoke to a lot of people both on the road and through Instagram that messaged us and said they'd taken their full-size vans into here. So yeah. it's possible, but I did have to get out a few times and spot you through like the tight trees over, and stuff, overhanging branches. So. But having said that, the campsites are definitely big enough for caravans. Yeah, yep. Anyway, while we're here, um, Chloe and I are going to go do the Majuk Falls walk, which is 2Ks return, um, and we should go for a swim at the end and see the waterfall. Um, and you and Brody are going to stay here. Yep. Um, so the Majuk Falls, that is apparently is the only waterfall that's open in Kakadu at the moment. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, there's a lot of closures. Um, I think things are either opening up later in the season or they're closed for uh, cultural reasons. So, yeah. Yeah. Righto. Let's go do this walk. Two Ks. Let's go, Clay. Good? Yeah. yeah. The hike itself was easy. Swimming across here was quite hard. <laughs> Righto, we better get back to Mum and Brody. Um, it was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The waterfall was spectacular. Really, really beautiful. When I first, to be honest with you, when we first got to the end of it, like when we first got to the water, there's only a really small little landing on the edge of the water, and it looked packed. And I just thought, oh, I'm not even going to go for a swim. But it's such a large pool, um, and there's little rock ledges around it, so you can leave your bag there, get in, swim to the side, and chill. People were jumping off it. I probably wouldn't because of submerged rocks and stuff, but... Um, and also it said no jumping. It did, so we didn't do that. Um, but yeah, we swam out to the to the waterfall and we swam... Oh, we actually swam under it. I couldn't get any video because I couldn't swim, hold Chloe uh, and film <coughs> under the waterfall. I swim, so I could do it. But I you could, you can't but it's crazy deep there. I don't know how deep, but you can tell it's really deep. Because he couldn't even stand. No way. Anyway, that was a, a ripper. For a 2k return walk, that one is well worth doing. Let's go back and cook your favourite dinner. What's your favourite dinner? Smash burgers. You know what? I just remembered we're not doing that. <laughs> Sorry. Where are we? No, I think we're doing that tomorrow night. We're actually doing... What? Yeah, we're doing something else. What is it? Is it spaghetti? I think we're doing beef brisket, which you're probably not going to be into, but you can try some. Sorry, kiddo. <laughs> Jeez, I really... Uh, Built, built, daddy built said, it up. Because Daddy said the other day um, that we were going to have smash burgers to Melo. I know, I'm sorry. And he sorry. kept saying, are you ready for smash burgers? Are you ready for <laughs> smash burgers? And then today we're not ready for smash burgers. I bought all the ingredients so we will have it. We've got something else for dinner. We better get back to um, Brody and Mum and get dinner on because it's starting to get late. Ready to go? Yeah. Let's go. Ooh, we're getting low. It's been hard to get booze here in the in the territory. They've got um, a lot of restrictions. Finally had my chance the other day, and I didn't bring my license, and they wouldn't serve me without it. Should have had it on me. Anyway, Brody's in bed, and um, yeah, Chloe thought I was doing smash burgers because I told her we were, but we're not. <laughs> we are doing something else with brioche buns. I've got one of these. Um, slow cooked beef brisket things from Woolies. I love these. They do a few different types of meat. Um, the ribs are really good as well. But yeah, I thought I'd do that on some brioche buns with a little bit of coleslaw and some QP. Um, just something nice, quick and easy. Cooking it on the Ziggy. I've got the tray from the, um, the stove inside. Do other people do that? I don't know. I've got a little bit of water in the bottom. 
just sort of keeps the meat nice and moist and also um, helps regulate the temperature because the water will hold some heat <clears throat> and stop it getting too hot. And I'm just gonna open this up and just sit it in the tray. I'm not gonna bother covering it in foil or anything because it's not gonna be cooking that long. It's already cooked, I'm really just reheating it. About 45 minutes, I reckon. And that'll be ready to go. And then I'll grill those um, brioche buns on the grill. Bit of coleslaw on top and uh, we'll laugh. Another good day. You happy for me to soak her? No, I'll do mine. You doing your own? Someone asked what that was the other day. It's Kewpie, Japanese mayonnaise. Good stuff. Boop. Get that in your gob. Mm. It's good. What are we doing tomorrow? Where are we going? Kuinda. Kuinda? Kuinda Lodge or something. We're going somewhere tomorrow. Somewhere else in Kakadu. We'll yeah, see you there. No. <laughs> <laughs> good night, guys. Well, the tribe has been fed. We've all had brekkie and a um, bit of a slow pack up this morning because the next campground we're going to, we can't get there until 11. And it's only probably 40 minutes away, but even by the time I air up my tires and. Um, and we drive out that 10 k's of corrugated track, which we'll get to shortly. Just doing the washing up, and I thought... First time ever. Hey, first time ever? First time ever. I do the washing up all the time. Whatever. Right yeah, anyway, I'm, you know, I'll start getting video evidence then. Anyway, I was just going to have a quick chat to you about what I reckon the three things are that limit how long you can stay off grid. So I reckon for us, the first one's actually the dunny, um, filling up a chemical toilet. And there are ways around that with composting toilets and whatnot. Um, we're basically limited as a family of three using the dunny, not including Brody who's in nappies. We're limited to around two nights, three days off one toilet canister. The way we get around that is by taking a second canister and that gets us four to five nights comfortably. We could probably stretch for a little bit more, but four to five nights pretty comfortably. Uh, otherwise, um, I can do wheeze outside in, in some campsites. Um, sometimes there's toilet blocks and whatnot, so we can extend our stay a little bit that way. But that's the first probably limiting factor of, um, of off-grid caravanning for us. The second is gonna be uh, power consumption for most people. Um, the size of the battery bank and then how you're gonna recharge it, whether it be from driving, solar, both, generator, whatever it is that you do. Um, I think a lot of people are getting lost at the moment and getting massive, expensive battery banks, but then they don't have the capacity to recharge them. There's no point having six 800 amp hour plus of battery bank and then having seven or 800 watts of solar on the roof and a 30 amp dc dc charger while you're driving because it's a false economy you're never going to be able to recharge that battery bank in a 24 hour period doing normal sort of um, traveling our system works really well um, but everyone has different needs and it needs to be tailored for for what your needs are so we've got a 24 volt um, 240 amp hour uh, battery bank which is around 480 amp hour at 12 volt uh, and 1,080 watts of solar on the roof, and that works really well for us. Um, you know, last night we're we're running the inverter so I can run Starlink all night because I was doing a little bit of work. Um, you know, microwaves on and off. We can run aircon heating, stuff like that. But everyone has different needs, and there's no one solution for everyone. So, But that is definitely the second limiting factor for people, and us included. If we don't have good solar conditions and I want to run everything, that is going to become an issue. Anyway, third limiting factor for off-grid stuff, and the one that I really wanted to chat to you about uh, now, was the amount of water that you take off-grid. So we have worked out that uh, if we're being fairly savvy, as a family, all of it, me, Tiff, and, and Chloe having showers, Brody having a bath, washing the dishes a couple of times, drinking water, all the rest of it, we will consume about 40 litres of water if we're being pretty savvy over a 24-hour period. And the reason I know that is because I use a Topogy um, water tank monitor, which tells me exactly what we're using, like litre by litre. When we ordered this van, we got 200 litres of water tanks on board. Now, that doesn't mean that you have actual 200 litres of water that you can use. When I measure the usable capacity from those 200 litres, I only got 160 litres that's usable. So straight away, you're losing 20% um, capacity there. Now, why that's important is because these factory water tank monitors that your vans come with that's telling me right now i'm at 75 percent if you think that's 75 percent of 200 liters you're going to think you got 150 liters left but 
I know that I don't because I've been measuring it with the app and I've only got 105 litres of water left. So that's a, there's a massive discrepancy there. The other thing is these are just grossly inaccurate, these water tank monitors. That will go from 100% to 75% to 50%, jump back up to 75%. It's all over the shop and it's just a really rough indication. If you want to maximise your time off grid, going by that water tank monitor, you're going to have a hard time. So, um, yeah, I'm finding the Topogy water tank monitor and the app really, really good. And it's been able to make us uh, trim down the amount of water we're using too. After I have a shower or Tiff has a shower or we wash the dishes or whatever, I'll check that water volume and I can see if one of us is using more uh, or different things that we're doing that can save some water. So we can sort of fine tune our water use to be able to limit it a hell of a lot more. And listen, we're, we're using 40 litres in a 24 hour period is still quite a lot of water. We could fine tune that a hell of a lot more. Um, but, you know, we like I said before, we know that with the, with the toilet, um, and the water, we're limited to around the four nights anyway. So I'm quite I'm quite comfortable using 40 litres of water in a 24 hour period. Getting four nights out of the two toilet cassettes, four nights off grid is about our comfortable sort of um, max off grid time. And then we want to drive through a town and refill, empty the dunnies or whatever. Anyway, a couple of tips there for uh, maximizing your time off grid. Hopefully that helps someone. I'm going to finish drying these dishes and uh, we're going to get to the next campsite in Kakadu. But first, we've got to get out of here. It's nice and green and lush, isn't it? Do you know which way we're going? It better be for 100 bucks a night. Is that how much it is? <laughs> yes. Tell you some more about this place that's quite interesting once we've set up. Ready? Cool. Well, not yours. Not mine. <laughs> Drive through bay. Love that. <laughs> Were you saying this is a hundred bucks a night? Ninety-nine dollars a night. Is this our most expensive accommodation so far? Mm, can't remember. Kings Canyon was really expensive too. <laughs> that might have been ninety-five. No, nah, it was less because we had a G'day rewards yeah, program. It was eighty dollars. But I night. only booked this. Uh, like two nights ago. So I think we've paid a lot because I've booked it so late. And I wanted to stay probably two nights here, but I could only get one, so. Even, yeah, all the bays look empty. Um, drive through bay, which is really cool, I like that. Although it's so unlevel that I had to unhitch anyway, so yeah. it's kind of pointless. Um, the other thing, this was the, the place that said you had to print off, you, they give you a code to get through the gate to get in, and then they told you to print off um, like your receipt, basically. Yeah, with and a, stick it on your dash. And or... stick it on your dash. What traveling person, <laughs> we're in Kakadu, so every single person here is not local, unless they've come from Darwin. Yeah. But you do a day trip from Darwin. So pretty much everyone here is gonna be from somewhere else. Who has access to a printer? Yeah. And then on top of your $99, they said, if you don't have a printer, you have to come into reception and pay to um, print it off. Well, so there may be charges. <laughs> there is no way we're doing that. <laughs> So, I mean, you when there's no there's no check-in facility here. Oh, there might be for like the actual lodge because there is uh, proper accommodation like rooms and stuff. Mm. But for the campground, they give you a code to get in through the boom gate. You drive in, you find your own bay. There's no map or anything. You just set yourself up. So yeah. there's no a human interaction unless Which, you need to print off your tag at reception. But oh, so that, so all that's about cost cutting, and then you pay a hundred bucks a night. Anyway, it's, it's it's not too bad. It's it, nice. It's just a little bit expensive. Yeah, it's nice and shady and green grass. Yeah. And the reason why we're staying here is because um, tomorrow Chloe and I are going to do the Yellow Waters Sunrise Cruise. Um, I was in two minds about doing it, but almost every person I've spoken to about Kakadu said you have to do the Yellow Waters Cruise. So I've been peer pressured into it. We're going to do it tomorrow morning. Just the two girls. Yeah, they do a sunrise and a sunset. Sunset, the timing's no good. Sunrise we could do with Brody, but it's two hours. Yeah, and it'll be more enjoyable just Chloe and I. So. Yeah, two hours is too long with a baby <laughs> trapped on a boat where they can't really get away. Yeah, so ideally I wanted to do two nights here, but one night will do. 
Yeah. Get up early, do the sunrise, and then tomorrow we'll move on to the next spot. Kakadu is so big that I like I did ask on Instagram whether I should just base ourselves in one spot or multiple spots, and the consensus was multiple spots. Just because it's so big, you're better off traveling, you know, moving along and then setting up camp. So that's what we're doing. We're doing three nights across three different locations. A couple of nights scattered through has been good. And the way we've done it, we've gone one site um, off grid. One on yeah. power and water, and then another one off grid. So, yeah, so we can do the washing today, fill up the tanks, yeah. empty the dunny. Yeah. Yeah. Run is, the aircon overnight, whatever. Yeah. Uh, the the wetland cruise we're doing tomorrow, you can actually drive up to the wetlands and have a look. So, we might do that at the Sabo. Walk along. Oh, yeah. There's a sunset thing to do here, too, isn't there? Or is that tomorrow? No, it's tomorrow. That's next spot. Yeah. All right. Lunch right. time. Some leftovers. And, um, I don't know, that's it for us today here. We're just going to chill, but I'll, I'll show you um, tomorrow. Tiff will take some footage for us of the sunrise tour, right? Eh? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay, Merle Campground. Um, similar to the first campground we did at Majook. It's not pronounced Majook, is it? Uh, Magook. 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 Similar campground to Magook. First come, first serve. Honesty box. So no, I think, uh, I'm not sure. There might be a camp host. Oh, okay. Not sure. We'll let you know about that. Ooh, buffalo in the area. Dangerous, avoid contact. Oh, cool. Yeah, that would be cool to see. Yeah, buffalo, yeah, we didn't see any buffalo this morning. But yeah, first come, first serve, and um, we're hoping we get a site because we're not super early this morning. Mill Campground, we're right really close to the Alligator River where we're going to go have a look at Cahill's Crossing. Um, well, one is closed. Uh oh. Maybe that's a good thing that the first one was closed. Quiet zone, no generators. That's what we want. Well, well, we're not quiet. Just screaming babies. We're not very quiet, are we? Please pay here and we'll come back. Oh, yeah, this is nice. This is beautiful. This is nice. We'll make sure we've got a site before we pay. But there's one just there anyway. Yeah, Beautiful, isn't it? It's a really nice campground. Very quiet as well. So much choice too. Where are we going? Um, a bit busy around this side, isn't it? Yeah. Are those first few ones that we went through? Were they? There wouldn't be a day use area here because it's not walking distance to anything. Is it? No. Hi. 
It's nice, really pretty. Uh, there is generator and non-generator sites. Do we know how much this one is yet? I think it's the same price, 15. 15 bucks for it's our much, family. much nicer than Majook. Majook. Yeah. yeah. I think so anyway. So do I. Just the foliage is really pretty. Yeah. It's more sort of like tropical looking. Um, heaps of bays, Steph. Generator camping, non-generator camping, group campsites, um, heaps and heaps of room, probably like a quarter full. And we, we're, we've camped quite close to where there's a walk track to Cahill's Crossing, which um, is what interests us really, because that's where all the, a lot of salties and stuff um, are around there. And I think that marks the end of, of Kakadu really, from uh, East Alligator River onwards is Arnhem Land. So, that's as far as we're going to go in Kakadu. There's something else we want to do while we're here as well. Is it Sunset Rock? A I don't know if I'm saying that right. A boa, a boo, a boo, a <laughs> And what's that? Uh, it's like some rock formations you can climb up to and watch the sunset. It's meant to be really beautiful. Are we going to be able to do that with Brody? We'll see how we go. We'll give it a crack because it's probably the last thing we're going to do in Kakadu. So we've only really just scratched the surface. Yeah. But um, yeah, we've enjoyed our time. Anyway, let's get set up here. Let's have some lunch. Tiffany's coffee, she hasn't had a coffee because she's been up early. Oh, no. And she's got a caffeine withdrawals already. And Are we gonna go down the river now? Yeah, we've got to unhitch though, don't we? Are we drive them down there? Um, do you want me to see how far it is? Yeah, see how far it is. We'll walk if it's close. Wait, is mommy coming to the river? Yeah, we're all going together. Oh. Mm -hmm. And we'll go check this out. So we're camped there and we're having a look at that crossing there. So it was a bit of a walk, wasn't it? Yeah. Whoa. It's flowing, isn't it? No, that looks crazy to cross. Good at croc watch actually on Is the it? boat on the boat today she was like croc croc she's the croc spotter kale's crossing was pretty cool yeah they were everywhere heaps of them and big crocs yeah just like floating in the water it was amazing now we've ducked down a uber uber yeah. uber uber i'm not sure how to pronounce it is it supposed to be a sunset rock viewing thing but it's um it's only like 4 30 so we're a couple of hours off sunset and there's it's hard to get a car park just looking at these yeah i'm coming That was a boar lookout. It was really, really pretty. I think worth doing. Um, it, quite an easy hike. A um, little bit of rock scrambling at the end, but it was fine, no problems. And then when you get to the lookout at the top, it's really beautiful. Sort of like a like an African savanna. Like a lot of people were saying, it reminded them of the 
the Lion King lookout, you know, at the end, that beautiful scene. Um, yeah, really pretty. Really, really busy. It is really busy. Um, Good examples of artwork if you want to see that. Yeah, lots of Aboriginal artwork along the way. Yeah, nice. I don't, I don't know how important it is to go at sunset. It was, it was beautiful regardless. Um, but yeah, if you have the time to sit up there for sunset and have a few drinks, it'd be nice. That's not us. It's, it's not nice when it's 35 degrees. Yeah, it's hot. And you're holding a screaming toddler. <laughs> <laughs> we bribed him with a lollipop. For the rock was uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Simple dinner cooking outside tonight because it is 34 degrees. You don't want to heat up the van cooking inside. So just doing a um, pizza on the uh, the Ziggy and that'll do us. You wrapping it up? Kakadu or kakadoint? Kakadu? Yeah. Yeah, kakadu. There's lots more to see that we didn't see. I and mean, I would love to come back. I'd love to come back and do Jim Jim Falls. Um, I'd love to do that sun thing, sunrise thing, sunset thing again. The, and the see rocks, the sunset. And actually see the sunset. Without children. Um, there's heaps more to do. There's wetlands and billabongs and all sorts of things that we only just scratch the surface really. Yeah. I think what turns people off, 150 bucks for our family to get in here for the National Park Pass. And then uh, 100 bucks a night accommodation, paying 240 buck, 240 a litre for fuel, uh, crowds. I, I get why people say caca don't. Yeah, it's expensive. Things, lots of things are closed, um, but it doesn't take away from the fact that it is a beautiful park. The foliage is beautiful. There are some anim you know, yeah. interesting animals. Nice. There is things to do. There's things for everyone, whether you're in a, a caravan and you want to do guided tours or um, you're in a camp trailer swag tent and you want to do full drive tracks and hikes and, and swims and whatever. Yeah, I think it's also good to base yourself sort of in different spots around the the park because it's huge. Yeah, it's too big to, um, to do from Darwin or um, to do from one yeah. camp really. I think the, the lady on the <coughs> cruise this morning was telling us, I think it's one third the size of Tasmania, Kakadu National Real? Park. Wow. Yeah, it's huge. Okay. It yeah. is big, but not all of it's accessible though. No. There's quite long distances between things, really. Anyway, Kakadu for me as well. <laughs> See you in the next episode. I think we go on Darwin tomorrow to take Brody to hospital. Yes. Tell you about that next episode. <laughs>